special because I'm special I have my sense of self and it's not for sale I know who I am and I refuse to fail the power of I am is my mind's master key for the way of the will is the life force in you and me the sacred source of all life's wealth is simply in how you look at yourself because I'm special I know who I am who I am I've got the power to succeed and in the spirit of faith I've got all that I need Hi, I'm Danny Queen, and welcome to another exciting edition of Color Me Poetry. Today we're going to talk about books, we're going to talk about poetry, we're going to talk about novels, and I'd like to welcome my guest in the person of Brother Yao. And Brother Yao is associated with uh, Caribou Books uh, here in, in the uh, PG County area, and the up-and-coming bookstore, and we like to just say welcome, Brother. Hey, thank you so much, Brother Danny. It's a uh, pleasure to be here uh, representing Caribou Books. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Caribou? What, what does Caribou mean? Caribou books, uh, well, actually, the title mm -hmm. Caribou uh, means welcome. It's uh, Swahili. Right, it comes from the key Swahili language. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, my partner, both my partner, um, mm -hmm. Brother Simba, and uh, my other partner, my wife, my mm -hmm. sister Carla, uh, they both uh, have studied key Swahili. Okay. And so when it came time for us to choose a name for our, our store um, or our business, uh, we, how, we chose that. How did Caribou uh, get started? Uh, actually, about three years ago, um, my wife and I um, had a daughter, um, and at the time that my daughter came, I was working for the government. Mm -hmm. I was in school. My wife was in school at Howard University, mm -hmm. and I realized that I didn't have a steady job that could guarantee me the support of my family uh, for the next mm -hmm. 30 years. Uh, my wife and I had been saving money. And so what I decided to do was, looking at my daughter and the situation I was in, I decided to go ahead and just take a little bit of money and purchase a vending license and then took $500 and purchased some books, some incense, and some oils. And then we went out to Howard University and started vending. And we did that every day uh, mm -hmm. after I got off work at my government job, which was a stay-in-school job. And you left the plantation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could say it that yeah, way. Yeah, that's the way I'm saying it. <laughs> Because I've had one of those plantations, but be that as it may. Uh, so you started, you know, as a, as a vendor. Right, we started as a vendor. And then it was about, about six to nine months later that um, my partner, Brother Simba, and I had talked. And then we became a larger company in that we had, instead of one vending stand, we had two vending stands, mm -hmm. uh, which later became three vending stands. So you pool your resources. Right, we had mm -hmm. to. We had to, and I guess the other real important blessing, the way we sort of connected is both Brother Simba and my wife and I stayed with, well, my wife and I stayed with our in-laws, with my daughter, and Brother Simba lived with his mother, and just mm -hmm. the whole idea of being in a position where mm -hmm. we Same. lived with our families and didn't have to pay that rent expense, and so That's we right. were able not to pay ourselves and really just pay the business the money that it was making so that the business continued to grow. And establish, yes. Yeah. But why, why, why a bookstore? I mean, what made you interested in, in, in selling books? Why books? I mean, why not uh, whatever, records or whatever? Well, I guess, I guess a couple of things. One is I, I've probably never been a money-hungry person, and I don't think anybody that mm -hmm. is an owner of our business is a money-hungry person, mm -hmm. um, that we have certain hobbies or certain things that we enjoy. Um, as, mm -hmm. as an African person in America, I'm concerned about our liberation, and those ideas have come to me from books. Um, principles right and so yeah. we're we're book readers and uh and we realized as book readers that we purchase books mm -hmm. and so that for us posed a place where we could do something that we enjoy doing and at the same time make a living and i think that's really the the, the basis of caribou is it's not that we're we're here to make this huge amount of money because we don't mm -hmm. um but that's coming though right well yeah. Well, but the the real deal is that we're in a position where we can do things that we enjoy mm -hmm. and at the same time provide for our families, provide for ourselves. And but, that's a blessing. Indeed. But Karibu is, is a business. It it's is a business. business also. It is but, a business. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, in our community, when we think about business, you know, we, don't, we need to think of it more, you know, in terms of a business. Uh, because, uh, 
Kiribu, you know, indeed is a business and a very viable business. And I think it's beautiful that brothers would come together the way you did. I mean, because right. you didn't plan it. You didn't plan right. on coming together right. with, you know, other people. And to come up with a viable business and providing a service that we need right. in our community. That's the beautiful thing about it. And, right. and, and oftentimes when I've been in Kiribu, uh, uh, I've seen people come in, brothers and sisters come in, and they, you know, they're reading books, and they get to, they only may, they, they may not even know each other, and they get to right. talking to each other, and the conversation, and so there's a communication that's taking place there, there's a growth there, it's like a water trough, people come there, and, you know, they read, and they, they meet other folk there, right. and they get to discussing what they've read, and, oh, well, check out this author, you know, have you read such and such by such and such author, and I think that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, really I, I would agree. See, sometimes, you, you know, you may not know that, but that happens. That happens right. a lot. And so sometimes when we, when we go into a business or providing ourselves, we don't know the, uh, the amount of people in our community or outside our community that we reach. Even with my books, I don't always know who I'm reaching. I reach people all over the country. Right. And it's a blessing to be able to provide that kind of service. And that's, uh, I was, from my heart, what you do at Caribou. Oh, okay. Well, thank and, you uh, so much. A few bro. weeks ago, you had your grand opening. Tell us about that. Okay, well, Karibu, um, we have two locations now. Uh, mm -hmm. About a year and a half ago, uh, we left the street mm -hmm. uh, and we entered, um, we put up two locations, one at Landover Mall. Uh, we have a cart there. And then we also put up a kiosk at Prince George's Plaza. Mm -hmm. In August of last year, so actually it's about a year now that mm -hmm. we've been in our new location, we opened a store at Prince George's Plaza, uh, which is located right outside the food court. Okay. Um, right across from Morrison's. And even though we've been in that spot for about a year, uh, being a small business and yes. given, you know, financial, mm -hmm. you know, yes. means that we yeah. have, mm -hmm. uh, we had been unable to purchase uh, mm -hmm. our sign, uh, the neon sign. It's rather expensive. And so we were blessed, uh, you know, to have the money mm -hmm. um, to purchase that sign. And so we figured that at that time, the store was in fact complete that we had reached a point where we 